Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. And I think another thing that we've started to see in the bear market is just new designs in regards to tokenomics as well. And I know that OVIX implements the VE tokenomics design. I'm not as familiar with uh, GoGo as much, but why? Uh, can you also explain just what are VE tokenomics? And maybe if you can even provide a history of VE tokenomics and how they became popular and how they benefit users, I think that would also be helpful. So um, VE um, has been initially uh, brought up um, or, or kind of uh, made 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 popular by Curve Curve Finance uh, when they launched their 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 governance token. They launched it directly with the uh, VE tokenomics mechanism um, in the background. Um, the beauty of it it creates basically um, you can say an additional utility to the token itself by having uh, n the token not just used for uh, on-chain governance uh, uh, votes that you know dictate the, the strategy of the future or or, or, or or the direction that the DAO or, or the protocol takes, but rather also how incentives um, and emissions are being are being distributed or being handled, right? Because um, at its core, uh, the community should uh, decide how they want to get incentivized best, rather than a centralized authority. So this is where uh, the tokenomics um, makes or yeah brought brought uh, a real innovation to the space because essentially you let the community decide uh, if and how. Uh, rewards um, that can be in your native token or, or a number of other tokens, uh, depending on your business case, uh, are distributed um, at, uh, at what emission rate and um, or volume. And um, the VE token in itself that is then basically minted after usually locking uh, the, the other token. So in our case, it will be the VIX token that you lock for the VVIX token. And the VVIX token itself uh, can be uh, used potentially uh, to, uh, to create a convex type of, I guess, bribing war where uh, others uh, that might want to increase, so for instance, in, in the case of OVIX, um, incentivize the medic re daily rewards rather than the, the Bitcoin uh, daily rewards, um, they could then try to incentivize in VVIX token holders, so V tokenomic uh, uh, token holders to then um, vote in their favor, in their case, and into the Matic market rather than the Bitcoin market to increase the yields or the rewards for the, for the, for the, for the Matic market. And by that, just create basically this uh, continuous support of, of, of um, incentives uh, that are aligned with what the users actually want rather than what the protocol decides to do. And um, this also, you know, has, has the benefit that locks the, uh, up the main token, meaning less tokens are in circulation, and that also means less uh, potential sell pressure uh, for the token. Uh, that's that's one main reason why many protocols are now exploring this or have implemented this. Um, and it's a, it's a good way to really gauge a kind of uh, the interest of the community wh where and what market in our case we have seven markets on ovix now uh, my um, uh, from Chidao uh, became the seventh uh, market that we started supporting since last week um, and uh, people can then once the token is live choose to uh, have their incentives be paid out rather uh, into, into more into the my market than the medic market or vice versa so that's that's a really really interesting uh way of of creating this so-called flywheel uh, where you lock and get more rewards. And uh, yeah, um, this locking also can uh, take as long as four years, which, which is a long time in DeFi. And um, we, we've definitely seen, um, you know, some projects um, doing exceptionally well um, of, of, of that model. So, so um, that's, 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 uh, that's definitely good to, to have uh, as part of your token uh, design or your tokenomics 
but I don't think that that's the end here. I, th- I think we'll we'll have way more innovations coming out uh, in in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the distant future when it comes to token design and to, uh, token economics. Um, so for my end, if I, I mean, I think Gary pretty much covered it almost entirely. But if I could add uh, a point to this is that, um, you know, it effectively adds more of the, the liquid voting aspect that people want to look for in, in Web3. Um, because with the uh, VE tokenomics, like Gary said, it's not just, you know, just as a, a, any random participant uh, earns the same amount of, uh, of, of, uh, of liquidity mined tokens on the protocol, but the users effectively control how this liquidity mining gets distributed. So that's one that the first thing that Gary mentioned. Um, with regards to the sell pressures, I would also add that there's another point that I think is very relevant, which is that it aligns the incentives of the DAO participants. Because without V tokenomics, effectively, uh, someone would someone could participate in voting and buy a bunch of tokens to participate to sway a vote and then dump the tokens afterwards. And with V tokenomics, this this is this is heavily unincentivized because especially the longer you lock your tokens for, the more voting power you have. Yeah, I think ever since the implementation of VE tokenomics, I've always I've also always kind of seen it as like a, a little bit more of a superior type of token, tokenomics system in the sense, you know, the, having to lock up those tokens, it, it kind of aligns, right, the users of the protocol, uh, the investors, the down members, everyone, it, it just helps with that alignment a little bit. Do you feel like that's like one of the major benefits that you see with that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, after all, it's uh, we we all the whole point of uh, of finance is to create like a communication medium uh, for value, not value in the form of necessarily money, monetary value, but also like value that we ascribe to choices, decisions, perspectives, opinions, and and so the the more the more uh, the participants can be kept incentivized to be in line with the value that they perceive, the better it is. And in this sense, veto economics is a way better job than just just simple tokenomic voting. Yeah, and I think. When- when I look over the landscape of DeFi in general, I think I see DEXs. There are so many DEXs in the space, decentralized exchanges. And then I think next to that would probably be the lending and borrowing protocols. And there are obviously just, there's so many lending and borrowing protocols in the space or interest rate markets is another way to put that term. What do you feel like sets OVIX apart from the rest of these is it the VE tokenomics alone, or are there other things that differentiate the protocol? Yeah, so um, the VE tokenomics is, is something we, we just, uh, um, from day one, when we discussed it with many uh, stakeholders, investors, and, and partners, that, that we felt um, makes makes a lot of sense, um, you know, because the community seems to, to really like that model. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's uh, just the founding uh, one of the founding initiatives, or or, or, or one of the main initiatives uh, when when founding uh, uh, when when Ovix was founded. But um, going forward, um, there, there are a number of initiatives um, that I think will can catapult uh, Ovix really to 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 the next level. Um, one being um, that that um, there will be a token, of course, uh, that uh, will have a number of utilities um, that that uh, hopefully will launch soon. Um, but other than that, um, I think the core vision of of Ovix is to be the core um, uh, money market of Polygon, and we just started um, the the partnership with Gogo. V2, uh, something we're very excited about to actually, uh, you know, really have those delta neutral strategies, uh, uh, power empowering those delta neutral strategies uh, that partially go uh, and work via OX, and and we can uh, definitely expand on that, which um, is something we're very excited about. Then the support of supernets, um, another thing that really keeps me um, uh, awake at night, and and um, you know. Speaking to our community, they all seem to be extremely bullish on this because Supernets is just an amazing scaling solution for Polygon itself. Um, and and um, I know how Polygon is excited uh, about that and, and pushing that, uh, trying to push that narrative. So so we definitely fully align there. And uh, without uh, you know releasing too much alpha, uh, I can tell you we're 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 integrating with one of the major Supernets. 
uh, projects right now, and uh, very soon, hopefully, will be the the, the first uh, money market lending market that uh, fully supports a supernet's use case. And the goal is to be basically the core money market for all supernets, um, for DApps or chains, uh, however you want to see them. And and um, yeah, we we feel very. Uh, uh, strongly about you know being able to 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 to, to build this and and to also scale this uh, together with you know supernets uh, scaling um, have tons of uh, support of interesting markets so apart from my where something I can share with you uh, is the Xmatic support that uh, is now going uh, live imminently. Which is a liquid version of Matic, as you know, a liquid version of Stake Matic, and um, that, that's that's I guess on the on 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 those things that you would expect from a DeFi protocol to do. One thing that um, I think not many expect us to do, but we strongly think it's uh, very necessary, is a very big focus on risk management, and uh, a few things that we've been building on, and Daniela can expand on this are are you know twenty four our liquidation probabilities, um, f- features where we, you know, um, look at toxicity numbers of underlying uh, tokens and 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 and, and uh, markets that we support, support um, dynamic interest rate curves um, that um, just create a more uh, stable way of how to plan for uh, excess market volatility where uh, potentially too many people start borrowing and you don't have enough liquidity, uh, things that usually lead to tons of cascading liquidations. And we found a way to, to kind of mitigate that and make it way more user-friendly to, to manage those interest rate risks, essentially. And then last and, uh, but not least, of course, uh, a, a very strong focus on ZK technology and, and privacy. Um, and um, this is probably the one we, where, where we, we can share the least amount of info right now just because it's still early days. But uh, we think this, this could be a game changer. Uh, if not this, then next year for sure.